So the 4.30 movie I started writing because uh, me and my friends bought my childhood uh, movie theater. That movie theater I grew up going to, the Atlantic uh, Cinemas. Um, we renamed it Smog Castle Cinemas. It's over 100 years old. Um, and once we bought the place, like I realized, oh, I got a location for free. Like now I own a very interesting movie location. And naturally, because I made clerks, you would think like, oh, I'll make a movie about what it's like to work in a movie theater, like ushers. But I never worked in a movie theater, so I feel like that would be stolen valor type situation and whatnot. So I was like, I've been to the movies a lot my whole life. And I used to jump and sneak around, you know, pay for one movie and jump theater, sneak around. I said, like, maybe I can make a movie about that. And because the theater that we bought is so ancient, like movies, the theater, the building's over 100 years old, the cinema itself is 100 years old. Um, everything in it looked old. Like the seats in Theater One are the same seats I sat in when I saw Friday the 13th Part Two. So I was like, if we point a camera inside, it's a period piece. It's our Merchant Ivory effort right here. Like it could be 1986 because everything looks so old. The moment you point a camera outside, you see modern cars and shit like that. We had like a under $3 million budget. So the idea of doing a period piece you know, it's, it's cost prohibitive because in order to make a uh, current day look like some other time, money's involved. Case in point, in 430 movie, when we pointed the camera outside the theater, we were gonna see the street. If you see a modern car, the illusion is shattered. So we reached out to a bunch of folks who have classic cars that live in the area, and we were like, hey man, can you just park on First Avenue this day? We're doing a shot that looks out. So you cover yourself that way. And you know, uh, 1986, while it was many years ago, is not that long ago. And there are still people that have cars from that era or even before that era. So you can find little hacks, little tricks to like keep it inexpensive. If we're in the theater, as long as we're pointing inside, it could be 1986 as long as everyone's wearing period appropriate clothing. And so it doesn't have to be as expensive as if you were like, you know, uh, setting something in the 1800s or even the 1960s. Well, I started driving 1987, one year after uh, the 430 movie set in 1986. So I had my learner's permit in 86, and I was driving my friend Ernie's truck. He had a Scout, which we got for the movie as well, a version of the Scout. It's not his, but close enough. So at 17, I get my license and I'm handed uh, a hand-me-down car. My godmother had this old yellow Volkswagen Beetle that her dad was a craftsman. He had taken off the bumpers and he made wooden bumpers that were shaped like an elongated heart. So it was dipped in, into, in the top and at the bottom it tipped into this point, but spread long like a bumper. So, you know, it looked like an interesting craft project and whatnot. And when my godmother was driving it, I'm, I'm sure nobody said anything, but as a kid in high school in 1987, pulling into the parking lot with that car, people were like, what's with the wooden bumpers? And I'm like, oh, you know, it never occurred to me. I was like, other cars don't have that? I'm looking around the parking lot and stuff. So it stood out right away, it marked me. So people in school would be like, you've got that car with the wooden bumpers. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. At that point, since people were looking at it, I remember being like, well, I might as well keep personalizing it. This wasn't mine, but maybe I could personalize it. So I took these Bullwinkle t-shirts I had, cut them up, and I sewed the image from the t-shirt into the seat backs. And that took the heat off the wooden bumpers, because then people would be like, you got that moose car. All of the cars that I owned in my entire life, up until Clerks, were hand-me-down cars. Some relative was like, this is about to die, you can have it, or something like that. And then after Clerks happened, um, they paid me 227,000 bucks for the movie, right? And so 100 grand of it went to blowing the movie up to 35 millimeter specs, uh, and then 27 grand of it went to pay off the budget, and then 100 grand that was left, I paid off the, the people that worked on the movie, the cast and crew, I, my parents lent me money, I lent, gave them some back, and I bought my brand new first automobile, the first brand new automobile I ever owned. It was a Dodge Neon and it cost $13,000. And that was like total price and I took a payment plan. But I was so delighted. I was like, this is my first new car. And Scott Mosier, we were driving because we drove from Jersey into the city like all the time and stuff. And one day he pointed out, he was like, this car is made of rubber. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, everything is plastic and rubbery. He's, if we get in an accident, we are dead. And I was like, are you serious? And he said, pull over. And we pulled over and he put his finger into my, into my fender. And I was like, oh my God, this is worse than the wooden bumpers. So after that, next thing I got was like a, 
a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I've been in SUVs ever since, with the philosophy being, because he scared me. If I get in an accident, I at least want to be able to walk away from the accident. In the neon, that was never going to happen. In the movie, in the 430 movie, uh, Ken Jeong's character, manager Mike, drives what he calls the movie mobile, which is like this very ostentatious, like somebody outside of the movie business's idea of what a movie car could look like or whatnot. But it's, you know, it looks like a Batmobile, and they've described it as such. It looks like a Batmobile, like the 60s Batmobile. But really, for me, it was an homage to one of my favorite movies of all time is Animal House. And at the end of Animal House, they make the Death Mobile. So when I was talking to the folks who were making the car, I was like, it's kind of like the Batmobile, but really I want it to look more like the Death Mobile. And they're like, from Animal House? I was like, yeah, as we're kind of homaging both. So they built this like ridiculously wonderful yet tacky vehicle, like where the, you know, on, on the Batmobile, it's got the thruster fire there. We have like a popcorn bucket and stuff like that. It's got film reels for hubcaps. And so, you know, is my attempt at getting a Hot Wheels vehicle. And when I was a kid, we collected Hot Wheels, we collected Matchbox and stuff. I've never made a movie that had a vehicle that got turned into anything. The only vehicle that really like was in a movie that could have been turned into a Hot Wheels or a, or a Matchbox was the Bluntmobile back in 2001's Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Back then, nobody was like doing, yeah, we'll do your weed car. So I've never had a car made from any of the 30 years I've been making movies, 16 films, never had a Hot Wheels car. This was my attempt. This was me going, look, this is made for Hot Wheels. Like, I'm hoping to God that Mattel gives us a shout and says, step up to the big leagues. You finally earned your own fake movie car in toy form. 430 movie played in theaters. I mean, you, you can always see the 430 movie at my theater. Uh, the Smog Castle Cinema is my movie theater in central New Jersey, in Atlantic Islands, New Jersey. We will play it there until the end of time. Every Sunday at 4.30, it will play from now until the day I die and hopefully after that. But if you're like, I can't go there, Jersey, what are you, nuts? Um, it's gonna be on home video October 1st. I'll see you at the 4.30 movie, Melody Barnegat. I'll see you at the 4.30 movie.